Hello students, welcome to Legacy Hairs Academy. In today's video, we are going to discuss about the recent controversy around BRS leader K. Kavita and how and why Supreme Court has granted her bail in the Prevention of Money Laundering Act related cases. So, we will discuss about the Prevention of Money Laundering Act and more precisely, what are the specific bail conditions or exceptions that has been given for the bail conditions for the vulnerable section of society such as women and children. So, let us try to understand this in the context which we are discussing today. So, the Supreme Court in recently has granted bail to Bharat Rashtra Samiti that is BRS leader K. Kavita from Telangana in graft and money laundering cash, cash that was registered against her by the two central government agency, one by the CBI, Central Bureau of Investigation and other was the Enforcement Directorate respectively in connection with the alleged Delhi excise policy scam. In this context, the Supreme Court bench also has castigated the earlier order that was given by the Delhi High Court in this regard where it has denied the application uh, uh, and it has refused to apply the rare leave or exception that has been given under the PML, uh, PMLA provision to the women. So, in this regard, Delhi High Court you try to understand before the matter was referred to the Delhi High Court and Delhi High Court dismissed the bail plea of the leader noting that she was well educated and thus could not be considered vulnerable. So, here the ground on which her vulnerability or her matter was not considered is because he has well ed good education so as to fall within the ambit of the exception and this is something that has been criticized or we can say castigated by the supreme court also so before moving further let us try to understand what is the money laundering money laundering the term as you can see it refers to money plus laundering laundering simply means a refer to uh, laundry activities where we take the dirty clothes and then wash it clean it and get back the clean clothes the same thing if it is done with regards to dirty money then it is called as money laundering in simple way money laundering refers to the conversion of illegal or dirty money into legitimate or white money the good big definition or in all encompassing kind of definition has been given by the pmla act also for example it says that whosoever directly or indirectly attempts to indulge or knowingly assists or knowingly is a party or is actually involved in process or activity connected with the proceeds of crime. Proceeds of crime means any such ill-gotten money which has been <coughs> received as a result of criminal activities including its concealment, possession, acquisition or use and projecting or claiming it as an untainted property shall be guilty of offence of the money laundering. And to tackle with such money laundering cases in year 2002, the government of India with the parliament basically passed a law that is called as Prevention of Money Laundering Act. Now, generally, if you look at this act, getting a bail is almost an impossible task. Why? So, actually, it is a section 45 of the PMLA which has imposed a very stringent condition if any accused has to get a bail. In this, the accused has to meet two conditions so that if he want or he, if, if a person want to have a bail. The first condition is to prove that he or she is prima facie innocent of the offence. And second, the accused should be able to convince the judge that if he get the bail, he or she is not likely to commit any offence while out on the bail. Now, due to these two stringent conditions and rigorous requirement makes the provision, the bail provisions almost draconian in nature and virtually rendering it, rendering it impossible to any for anyone to obtain bail until the completion of the trial or unless and until his guilt or innocence can be or his innocence can be proven. Now, here is where the exceptions comes into picture. Now, this bail condition has been given an exception for under the clause 1 of the section 45. The clause section clause 1 of the section 45 allows the courts that it can use its discretionary power to exempt persons who are below 16 years of age, person who are women, the sick or the infirm from these dual conditions for the bail. And it is similar to the exemption provided for women and minors under the other criminal law statutes also. For example, the earlier it was criminal procedure court, now it has been placed by the Bharatiya Nyasanita. So, similar kind of, we can say, exemptions have been given to the vulnerable classes in other, uh, we can say, other criminal law as well. And same thing applies here also. 
Now, in this regard, Supreme Court has made a very important observation. It has said that the concession that is provided to women under the PMLA owes its origin to what we can call as Article 15, sub clause 3 of the Constitution, where a government has to take a special care for its vulnerable section and has to make a special laws or exemptions for the vulnerable section of the society. So, in the impugn order, the High Court, if you talk about, if you remember in the beginning, we have discussed that the Lee High Court has refused to grant bail on the ground that C does not belong to such category of women who can be considered or classified as vulnerable because C is well placed in the strata of the society. So, the High Court has reasoned that K Kavita does not fall in the category of women that the PML exception arguably applies to. And also to prove its point, High Court has taken support of a judgment that is called as Somya Chaurasya judgment. How will Supreme Court has rejected this notion? Supreme Court has stated, especially if you talk about Justice B. R. Gavai, he has observed in order that High Court had in fact misapplied the Somya Chaurasya judgment. And the ruling had actually urged judges to be more sensitive and sympathetic. We are talking about the Swami Acharya's judgment and especially toward the category of vulnerable persons. So, even in the case Delhi High Court is applying the logic of the verdict given in Swami Acharya case, then also Delhi High Court should have granted the bail to the leader as per the observation made by Justice B. R. Gavai. Now, is there any other judicial precedent in this case? So, we can go back to a year before when a Delhi High Court granted bail to Preeti Chandra who is the wife of Unitech promoter Sanjay Chandra and it was the same case under the same law related to money laundering and it was also being investigated by the ED that is the enforcement directorate. Now, in this case, Delhi High Court has observed that neither the PMLA nor the constitution intended to classify women on the basis of their education and social standing. That means this current situation where the High Court has not granted the bail to Kayogeda on the ground that she is educated does not stand to good. Second, such beneficial provisions which are reflective of the constitutional spirit must be given a liberal interpretation. That means basically what is trying to say that whenever we have an exception granted in a law to the vulnerable section of society, it should be applied liberally, it should be interpreted literally, uh, sorry, liberally rather than having a parochial outlook toward it. And thus to argue what kind of woman is entitled to fall within the proviso to section 45 sub clause 1 of PMLA, that is exception clause for the bail, by creating an ad hoc illusionary sub classification is not justified. Thus both the last year order of the Lee High Court before and the current stance taken by the Supreme Court are aligning together. Thus, what we can see in conclusion that here also the judiciary has added certain qualifiers as well. That it's not that in all the cases just by closing the eyes, they can the bail can be granted to the vulnerable section like women and all. Rather, it has set two qualifiers. First, the accused must not be a flight risk. Flight risk here refers to if accused is given or granted a bail, what is the risk or he what is the risk that he or she can flee the country where the law applies and take refuge in other countries as we have seen in the past when a lot of economic defaulters have left the country and never returned back. So, the flight risk whether the accused is flight risk or not that should be evaluated. And second, they should not be capable of influencing witnesses or tampering with evidence to be eligible for bail. Otherwise, if they are very powerful, they can influence the witnesses, they can threaten the witness and they can also interfere with the evidence process and this will help them obviously in the granting of bail or we can say improving their innocence in the future. So, if these two conditions are met, then the bail can be given and the bail order was subsequently affirmed by the Supreme Court also. So, in both cases, in the past case and the recent case, this is what we can understand about the interpretation of judiciary as far as the exception to the bail law goes in the PMLA. That is all for this particular video. Thank you very much.